Hi, Miriam. Happy to see that I have more essays from you to look at. So good. Let's take a look at what you wrote. This is the car possession one. Here's what you said. Experts throughout, that needs to be throughout, both the developed and developing countries have debated, not would have debated, whether a private car, mm, no A, whether private car possession has a negative impact or is merely convenient and accessible. I don't understand the reason of the word, reason for the word accessible here. I wouldn't agree with that at all. This essay discusses both sides using examples from the UK government and Nottingham University to demonstrate points and prove arguments. Okay, you never told me what your opinion is. If I'm not mistaken, the essay does ask for it, so please supply it here in your introduction. Uh, okay, there is not an, because evidence is uncountable. So, there is ample evidence that owning owning, not owing, owning a private car for each citizen has a detrimental effect on cities and environment as well, the environment. The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, this tendency leads to a frustrated transportation. I don't know what this means, frustrated transportation. Do you mean crowded transportation? Do you mean crowded cities? It, um, it, it's, it's not an expression that really is clear in its meaning. Okay, uh, traffic jams, plural, and overcrowded roads, comma, especially in rush hours. Secondly, the environmental damage caused by ever-increasing dash here, car numbers, so no apostrophe S and S here for the numbers, is, and no comma here, is seriously threatening, ING, public health, compared to before. Um, okay, it would be nice to tell me why. You, it would be nice to hear something about the carbon monoxide released into the atmosphere, something. Okay, don't assume that your reader understands why. Um, for example, somebody could say, oh, well, you know, maybe Miriam is referring to noise pollution. All right, so whatever kind of um, environmental damage you're referring to, please specify, okay? It must not be forgotten that the emitted fossil fuel from cars not only affects the environment, but also, but it also has dangerous consequences on people's health. For example, a recent empirical study by the UK government found that air pollution is a fundamental reason for tongue cancer in a considerable percentage of patients. Therefore, it's conclusively clear that the environmental issues are the largest drawbacks of car possession. Okay, great. So I take back what I said um, before. It's uh, it's clear you did develop it quite a bit. Um, for me, then the pit part that probably need to be developed a little bit more was this. It really felt like you only had one central argument and you didn't really talk about this traffic and the overcrowded roads and, and all of that. So you could have maybe extended it a little bit in the way I, that I suggested. Maybe you could have said something maybe about the quality of life being reduced because people are stuck in their cars, there's noise pollution, um, and so it's essentially a quality of life issue. Okay? All right, moving on. Although there is a case for having, mm, I see what you're trying to say. Okay, let's not say having a car harming society. It's just, it's awkward. And it, yeah, it doesn't really work entirely. So let's switch it around a little bit, shall we? And let's, ins they said, let's instead say, although there is a case for car possession harming society, the interruption disturbance and inconvenience in public transport are the fundamental reasons for this desire. Um, all right, let's ignore the word moreover for a minute and continue. The privacy provided by personal car is not found in any other means with an S of transportation such as coaches, taxis, taxis, and tram. For instance, a cross-sectional study done by the University of Nottingham, capital U, revealed that 80% of people preferred to purchase a vehicle instead of using public transportation, no A there, because of privacy concerns. Consequently, it is possible to state beyond doubt that there is a considerable case to be made in favor of owning, not owing, owning a car. Okay, the reason why I wanted to ignore this word moreover, because moreover essentially introduces like a, like another idea. Um, it's kind of like a furthermore, and so what you really should have been doing here was illustrating what you meant here. Um, I wanted to hear, I wanted you to extend this argument a little more and then go into the rest of your ideas. So that for me, um, it, again, I felt like it was missing something. It was missing like a, a sentence or something. 
Okay, um, let's look at your conclusion and then we'll talk about it a little more holistically. So, to conclude from arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that the disadvantage of having a car is extremely devastating to people's lives, plural. The cons are much, careful with your typing, greater than the pros. Okay, so, um, there are a couple of problems with the task achievement here. Nothing very, very serious, but there are a couple of places where you could have extended your answer a little more. Um, and that was in both paragraphs. What I saw was really consistently some problems with your grammar. Um, I don't want to say every sentence, but they were pretty consistent throughout the essay. And so that's the thing that I really want you to be aware of, in addition to, of course, the task achievement and making sure that you are supporting your arguments, okay? Um, it's those two things. The, the ideas themselves were fine. Um, you had some good coherence and cohesion, but again, some of the ideas weren't really well linked, like with this thing with moreover, that confused me a little bit. So, um, but what I want you to focus on as areas to work on would certainly be the task achievement and the grammar. So uh, go ahead and do that, and let's look at your next essay. There should be a letter. Nope, it's a chart. Okay, so two pie charts, the, the two pie charts. Compare school subject preferences across two years, 2014 and 2017, New South Wales. In 2014, both math and geography were the most popular subjects amongst students at around 27 each, and then experienced a marked decline, reaching, no two, 12.2 and 18.7 respectively in 2017. Physics only experienced a slight increase by about a mere 2%, no of, to reach 21.2 in 2017. While students preferred to study biology, while students who preferred to study biology surged from just 13.4% to around a quarter to be the most popular subject in 2017, those who liked PE more than halved, okay, declining to 3.2 in 2017. Focusing on chemistry, IT, and history, it is clearly evident that all of them started at around 1% in 2014, and every subject that has a, had, not has, a completely different figure in 2017. The proportion of students who studied history in 2017 was almost 20 times that of to that of 2014. Yes, the IE percent, IT percentage remained unchanged in 2014 and 17, whereas chemistry declined to zero in 2017. Overall, math and geography accounted for more than half of the total subjects in 2014. Nevertheless, the students' preference was more evenly split between geography, history, physics, and biology in 2017. Great! This was really good. Did you have some little grammatical problems with your prepositions? Yeah, you did, but you know what? I really liked this. Um, you had a nice variety of language, a nice variety of grammar and vocabulary, and you included, as far as I could tell, because you didn't include the bar chart, uh, the pie chart, you included all the information, and I like the way you did this. That was good that you put all these little ones all together, and you put all the bigger ones together. Um, it was really nicely done, and I liked your overview as well. Um, it's always my personal belief that people should put the overview right after the introduction, because it's not a conclusion, it's an overview. So you're showing the biggest overall trend. But, you know, lots of IELTS tutors will, will differ in opinion on this, so there's not one thing that's right or wrong. Um, like I said, I'm basically just, you know, looking really, really, really at details here. They're both fine. Um, but it was well done. Just clean up a little bit the grammar, um, and that's about it. Nicely done. So go ahead, correct these, send them back, and I'm looking to, uh, I'm waiting to see your next essays, okay? Good luck with them.